Keeping the stage neat saves you a lot of time and keeps the customer and the band happy and safe. The easiest way to keep the stage neat is to use fewer cables. And that means that we need to use more multi-core cables. With more and more multis and stage boxes on the stage, things can get confusing and complicated. Now, plugging the wrong input in on a busy stage is a no-no, but if you understand how everything works, then there's a lot less chance for you to make a mistake. I've plugged a lot of things in wrong places in my career, so I'm going to share what you need to know to avoid doing it. How multi-core cables are made up, how we use them for more than just XLR and microphone signals, and how to keep on top of them. If you're setting up a Dante stage box, then you'll want my Dante cheat sheet. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. Let's dive in. So let's start with microphone cables, XLR cables, they're the most obvious. And we need to start by understanding the construction of this cable. Inside an XLR cable, you'll see there's this outer coating of plastic or whatever it is, PVC, I think. And then on the inside, there are two copper wires, which are coated in more plastic. And then around them, there is a braid of metal called the shield, right? So that's three connectors inside. Hot wire, your cold wire, more on them in a second, and you've got your shield. So the reason the shield is wrapped around the outside is to create this sort of barrier against interference. And it's connected through this pin to the outside of the XLR connector, the metal outside of the connector. And that helps dissipate any interference into the chassis, into the ground. Now, the reason there's two separate cores inside this shield is that it allows us to send a balanced signal. What this means is at the start, we've got two signals. They're the same, right? One of them gets flipped upside down and then they're both sent out on these two wires. Now, if interference should happen along the way, it causes the waveform to increase momentarily on both signals. So both signals get a spike up the way. Now they transfer along the end of the cable and then when they get to the end, the one that was flipped is once again flipped back into phase. So now it is in a complementary phase relationship. Simple language, all that means is it combines to make it louder. Except that interference that happened along the way, it affected both cores of this cable and both cores got a spike up the way. So you see, once we flip one of them at the final destination, now the spike of interference that previously spiked upwards, spikes down the way, meets the interference which was not flipped and the two of them cancel each other out. So basically, long story short, with two cables, you're able to cancel out interference. All you need to send a balanced signal is two wires and the correct infrastructure on both sides. So for example, an XLR connector. It doesn't need to be this individual cable. It can be collected inside a multitude of other cables. Let's talk about XLR multi cables then. We still need three pins to transfer one XLR signal, right? One microphone signal or DI box or whatever is on it. What we do is we get a group of these two cables, hot and cold, and then we wrap them in a shield. That's an XLR cable. But what if we got two groups of these hot and cold? That's four cables, two hot, two cold, and we wrap them in one shield, right? What if we got 24 wires, 12 hot, 12 cold, and we wrap them in one big shield. Now we have a 12 channel multi-core cable. Each connector at the end of the cable is connected to its two individual wires. Each connector has a one hot and one cold. And on the other side of the cable, same wires are connected to a hot and a cold. And that's channel one. And this braided shield that goes around the whole cable to help fight off interference. And as long as the correct cores are wired up at each end and labeled, you're just sharing a shield and enclosing it all in one body. But there is also a possibility to make this even more practical, right? On the end of the cables, we can install multi-pin connectors. That means that it's not your standard XLR cable at the end. It is one connector which has multiple pins instead of just the three that you find in an XLR connector. If we have the right infrastructure, we can use something like an LK connection to connect all of these pins into a stage box. And all that means is that when you screw these together, then the correct channels all line up. So channel one on the stage box has now been lined up with the channel one cores in this multi-core. You can do the same on the other side. You have a breakout box or perhaps even an input into your mixer. And what happens is when you screw that in, it just creates this connection so that the wire is again continuous. Each XLR connector on one side goes all the way down this multi-core through this multi-pin connector into the multi-pin connector on your mixer, for example, and then 
transfers those signals to a channel. Now, why do you want to do this? Well, it's a lot quicker, right? If you've got a stage box on one side, obviously you're going to connect different instruments to that stage box. Then you go down your multi-core, but when you get to the mixer, you might know that you want that stage box to go into channel one, two, three, four, five, six, up to 12 or 24. You're not necessarily going to take channel one from the stage box into input three on the mixer, right? It's going to be linear. So why not just have this pre-wired connection into the mixer, which you can just screw in, and then you know that stage box one goes to inputs 1 to 12. If you get multiple of these connectors and stage boxes, then you can just have four big connectors and suddenly you have, for example, 48 inputs plugged in with just four cables. But it's not just microphone cables, microphone signals that we need to transport lots of on a stage or around the stage, is it? We also need to transport speaker signals. When you start having to run eight separate speaker cables to the front of the stage, that's quite a lot of cables to pull. But we can employ the exact same understanding to multi-core speaker cables. A speaker signal is two wires, right? It's a positive and a negative. Positive to push the speaker forward, negative to draw the speaker back, and that vibration creates sound waves. Basically, I'm not very good at physics. So inside a speaker cable, it's the same thing. It's a plastic outer coating, and on the inside, two wires. No shield this time because of the high voltages, blah, blah, blah. Speaker cables don't need shielding. You've probably seen a speak-on connector, right? And on its most basic, we call this speak-on connector an NL2. Why is it an NL2? It just means that inside the speaker connector, there are pins to wire up two connections. Now we know two connections is what we need to transfer the speaker signal, right? A positive and a negative. So an NL2 connector can send one speaker signal. We also find NL4 connectors. You might have guessed by now, an NL4 connector has four pins. That means that you can get a big old cable with four speaker cables inside it, and then you can wire them up to this NL4 connector. Now, if you find an amplifier with an NL4 output, that means you can connect your NL4 connector to the amplifier and send two separate speaker signals down one cable. At the other end of the speak on cable, you can have a breakout cable which is two separate speaker cables. Because two of these cores, positive and negative, go to one connector, and the other two go to another connector. What about an NL8 connector? You've guessed it, it's double again. It has eight wires connected to it for a possible four speaker signals. Any kind of high-end amplifier from DMB, acoustics, Meyer sound, will have something like this on it. Connect it up to there and you can program the amplifier to send four separate speaker signals down one cable. You could break that out into four NL2 connectors at the other end, or you might have a breakout box, which you can then set on the stage and label monitor one, monitor two, monitor three, monitor four. And then, hey presto, you've got most of your monitor speakers transported from the amplifier at the back of the stage to the monitors at the front of the stage. And you just need to grab some short speak on cables, plug them into each channel and connect up. A last solution that I want to dive into here, which I think is really cool, is sending XLR signals over CAT cable. Because we often use CAT cable for digital stage boxes, right? You know, we connect up our CAT6 cable between our mixer and our stage box, and hey presto, digitization, we get like 32 channels of forward and back. But how is that CAT cable made up? If you open up a CAT cable, you will see inside it's actually eight wires, right? That's four pairs of wires. What can we do with four pairs of wires? We can send four line level or microphone level signals. We just need to make the connection work. So you can actually find CAT cable breakout boxes. They basically line up the XLR connectors on the box and transport them into the connectors on the CAT cable. So inside this CAT cable, you have these four pairs, a hot and a cold for each line. And then at the other side of the CAT cable, you have this other breakout box, which transforms them out into XLR cables again. You just need to make sure that you're using shielded CAT cable so that these XLR connectors have shield. But the real beauty of this is that you don't even need fancy CAT cable. It doesn't need to be of a certain standard. All CAT cables are just copper wires inside a cable housing. So just think about that. If you need to pack light and you need to get a small number of signals, for example, in your monitors from a stage box at the back of the stage to performance at the front of the stage, why not buy one of these CAT breakout boxes? And then you can just run a really light CAT cable under the stage and then pop it out and connect to those in-ear monitors. So how do we keep on top of our stage boxes? We use a spreadsheet. And in this spreadsheet, I just have all the information that I need to know about the stage, the channel name, 
what the instrument is that I'm plugging in, the channel number on my mixer. And that is channel one, two, three, four, up to like 48 or whatever. Then I have the device. If you have multiple stage boxes, this is a digital stage box we're talking about, then you might find that you have 16 on one stage box and then you have eight or 16 on another stage box. And if you're looking for channel 20, you need to know that it is stage box two, input four. Then what that instrument is, micro DI, and then this is where we're looking at the analog stage boxes, which we would place on the stage. I would use letters to label the stage boxes and numbers then to label the channels. I've written LK boxes because they're connected with LK connectors. So you've got these two stage boxes, right? A and B. And you might have one to one on the first stage box. So stage box one is going into channel one on your mixer. Everything's great, everything's gravy. 12, first 12 channels are in stage box A, you know that. On channel two, you've got your guitars, right? And you connect the first two, and then you've got nothing going into these channels. So you skip these two, and then you would connect the next channels into three and four on this stage box. And so similarly, maybe you don't have any keys, that's fine, but then you've got synth, and you connect synth box B, just copy box B to your synthesizer and then write channel five. When I want to diagnose a problem, let's say I have no input on synth. We'll just start at the stage box, right? Channel five on stage box B, is the synth connected to it? If yes, great. We go to our digital stage box. Channel five on DL16 number two, is box B channel five connected to it? Cool, then we go to our mixer. Channel 21 on our mixer, is stage box ID two, channel five connected into channel 21 on our mixer. And just like that, we keep on top of things. If any of this was over your head, I'll leave a link to another stage box video here. If it was too simple for you, then I'll leave a link here to more advanced videos on setting up systems. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.